What we commonly refer to as color is the effect on our eyes of light waves of differing lengths and frequencies. When all colors in the visible spectrum are combined, they create white light. The most common example of white light is light produced by the sun. The colors in the visible spectrum all travel at different speeds and on different wavelengths. This is why when white light passes through a prism, it refracts into separated colors. As illustrated by rainbows, the basic color of the visible spectrum can be broken down into red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Without the presence of light, we cannot perceive color. Because white light is composed of all colors, the full visible spectrum is present in everything we see. When we perceive a particular color, such as the yellow of a hard hat, or the orange of carrots, or the lavender of lavender, the general color we see is the one that reflects off the surface of that object. Because that color is local to the surface of that particular object, we call it the local color. Although yellow is the only color that bounces off the surface of a hard hat, all of the other spectral colors are present, but are absorbed into the hat. The term hue refers to any particular spectral color. A hue can be anything from split pea soup green, to wine stain red, to toilet bowl water blue. Much of our understanding of color theory was introduced in the 17th century by the British scientist Sir Isaac Newton. Newton was the first to discover that a prism refracts light into differing wavelengths. Although color theory has changed a great deal since Isaac Newton's time, color theorists today still use a diagram that Newton created over 300 years ago. His color wheel it illustrates the basic relationship between all hues in the visible spectrum. The hues of red, yellow, and blue are referred to as the primary colors. These are called the primary colors because these three colors are the building blocks of the color wheel and cannot be created by mixing any other hues. On the color wheel, the primary colors are represented by the number 1. When you mix any two of the primary hues, you produce a secondary color. Mixing red and blue yields violet. Red and yellow yields orange, and blue and yellow yields green. On the color wheel, the secondary colors are represented by the number 2. When you then mix a primary color with a secondary color, you produce an intermediate color. These are the two name colors. These hues include red-orange, yellow-orange, yellow-green, blue-green, blue-violet, and red-violet. On the color wheel, the intermediate colors are represented by the number 3. Although the intermediate colors are all that there is room for on the color wheel, they do not represent the full extent of color mixing. Opening a large box of Crayola crayons gives you a better idea of the infinite variations of colors that can be mixed. Any hue mixed with black results in a shade. The more black that is present, the darker the shade. Any hue mixed with white results in a tint. Similarly, the more white that is present, the lighter the tint. We refer to these mixtures as tints and shades rather than hues because white and black themselves are not spectral hues. The term saturation refers to the purity of a spectral hue. The more shade or tint that is present in a mixture, the lower the saturation of the hue. A color scheme is a grouping of colors that an artist uses to produce a distinctive color harmony or dissonance. A complementary color scheme is created when an artist uses two hues that are directly opposite each other on a color wheel. The most common examples of complementary colors are red and green, blue and orange, and yellow and violet. Complementary colors are known for their vivid level of contrast. They seem to vibrate off of each other and are used prominently in the media from advertising to sports team logos to holiday cards. 
The strength in these opposing colors lies in their visual tension. When complementary colors are mixed, they lose their saturation and neutralize into a dull gray. The pop artist Andy Warhol made many portraits of well-known figures using complementary colors. There seems to be a correlation in his work between popular culture and colors that seem to pop off of the page. A monochromatic color scheme is any one hue plus its tints and or shades. Monochromatic schemes are inherently limited in their scope and seem much less visually stimulating than complementary colors. The painter Mark Tanzi often works with the limited palette of monochromatic colors. Notice the almost cold detachment that this color scheme lends the image. The final color scheme that we will discuss is the analogous color scheme. Analogous colors neighbor each other on the color wheel. Examples of analogous schemes would be red, red-orange, and orange, or blue, blue-green, and green. The feelings that analogous colors evoke are related to their specific color families. The warm colors, which encompass the yellows through the red-violets, tend to evoke feelings of heat, tension, and agitation. By contrast, the cool colors, which encompass the violets through the yellow-greens, tend to evoke feelings of coldness, melancholy, and composure. The warm colors in this painting by Miriam Steffen echo the frenetic energy of her forms, and they seem to reference the heat of things like lava or the inside of a body. The phenomenon of optical mixing occurs uh, when our eyes see many distinct colors together and our brain generalizes them into one color. In this way, optical mixing shares some similarities with the previously discussed phenomenon of gestalt. One of the pioneers in the study of optical mixing was the French post-impressionist Georges Seurat. He used his style of pointillism to amass many small dots of unique color so that when we step back from the paintings, the dots of color meld to create the image. The contemporary paintings of Chuck Close further explore the potential of optical mixing. In his work, he paints large, seemingly abstract shapes of color. When viewed from a distance, these colors congeal into the large-scale portraits of his subjects.